Hi, Gloucester students, it's Ms. Bangarash here. You have all gone home, um, your day is done, but I am still here at Gloucester and I'm gonna make you a video to show you all the important things we learned this We've week. We've learned a lot of new words. We've learned about tables of values. We've learned about initial value, which means the starting number. We've learned about rate of change, which means the jumping number. And we've also learned what the word linear means. And those words are words that you need to remember and you need to practice using them so you know them very, very, very. So here we have a table of values. And for this table of values, we want to find the initial value. We want to find the rate of change. And we want to determine if it is linear. So first I want to find the initial value. Now some people would think when they look at this table of values that the first number is minus eight. So it must be the initial value. But others of you will know that to find the initial value, we need to find the number that's next to the zero. Because zero for x is really the beginning of our table. So here we have zero. The number next to zero is minus five. And that means that the minus five is the initial value. Also, we learn about rate of change. And in class today, we talked about if you want to find the rate of change, you need to do bottom number, subtract the top number. So here, the bottom number minus the top number. Four minus one is three. Next, the bottom number minus the top number. One minus negative two. In class today, we talked about if you've got two negatives, it means one plus two. So that means this rate of change is also three. Here we have three, here we have three. It's beginning to look like it might be linear. Let's check the next one. Negative two, subtract negative five. Don't forget, it's the bottom number minus the top number. So this, these two negatives right here, they form a plus negative two plus five. Notice that the five is more positive than the negative two. So we know our answer will be a positive and it will be positive. Negative two plus five gives you three. Let's confirm with a number line. Here's my number line. You have one on your desk. You should always be looking at it just to make sure that your answer makes sense. Okay, so I'm starting at negative two and I'm going up five. One, two to get to zero. Three, four, five, I get three. So my rate of change is three. We're hoping, because we always like patterns in math, we're hoping that the next one will also be three. Let's check, bottom minus top. Okay, again, two minuses make a positive. Negative five plus eight. That's also gonna give you three because eight subtract five gives you three. So now we've got this beautiful table of values and the biggest thing you need to remember is this rule right here, bottom minus top. If you always subtract the bottom number minus the top number or bottom number subtract the top number, you will get the rate of change. And what I notice now is here the rate of change is three, here the rate of change is three, here the rate of change is three, and here the rate of change is three. So when I make the graph, I know my graph should be linear. Just to confirm that it actually is linear, it should be linear because it's always jumping the same, the rate of change. I go to my cell phone, you can use your computer, and I search desmos.com. And when I search desmos.com, then what I can do is I can add my table of values into Desmos. This is the table of values um, that I was using on my piece of paper. And I hope that when I look at the graph, the graph will be linear. And actually, my graph should be linear and increasing. Increasing means going up. And the reason it should be linear is because it's always jumping by three, the same, and it should be increasing because it's always jumping up three, which means my line should be starting low 
and going high. So that's our new word. Our new word is increasing and increasing means going up. Our linear graph, our line is going up and the reason it's going up is because our rate of change is plus three. It's jumping up three each time. If we had a graph that was decreasing, going down, that would mean that over here, our table of values would have to be, our table of values would have to be going down and the rate of change would have to be negative. So anytime you see that your rate of change is a negative number, it's decreasing. Anytime your rate of change is a positive number, it's increasing. And in order to find the rate of change, we always need to do the bottom number minus the top number. 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 I hope that helped a little bit. If you still have questions, you can send me an email, you can send me an Instagram, you can send me a WhatsApp, and you can also add your comments to the bottom of the YouTube video. I'll see them and I can respond to them. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Friday.